give you a brief introduction of Professor Dhani. Uh, professor Dhani was formerly a professor of mathematics at the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Uh, after his retirement, he was invited to join the Indian Institute of Technology in Mumbai. Uh, he is pre the president of Indian Society for the History of Mathematics and also an editor of the prestigious journal Ganita Bharati, which many of you might be knowing. Besides his valuable contributions to mathematics, he has also published several important papers on the history of mathematics in India. So you would find you have a very apt person to give an inaugural address. I invite Professor Dhani to give his address. Good morning, uh, colleagues and guests and uh, the younger generation. <coughs> I, it's a great pleasure for me to be uh, speaking to you on this occasion. And I thank uh, the organizers, uh, especially Dr. Bedekar and Dr. Agarkar and uh, Dr. Sharma for uh, this opportunity. Uh, at the outside, I must say I'm quite uh, impressed at the efforts. I mean, I, I'm, uh, 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 when uh, the project was introduced to me, Dr. Bedekar came and uh, visited me at IIT and uh, mentioned about that, about uh, what was uh, planned. And uh, I hardly thought it was really possible. I mean, it, for uh, some, I mean, for an institution which uh, like uh, un, uh, not uh, part of the government with free access to money, etc. But uh, by and by, I realized that the strength of conviction that comes from various people uh, that are involved, like Professor Sharma, Dr. Bedekar, and his team, and so on was really substituting for that, and uh, there was a lot of activity. Uh, it is uh, somewhat saddening to know that uh, many people, uh, of the uh, proposed speakers had to cancel. But nevertheless, uh, we, have, we are here, and uh, I, I think uh, uh, there's already a, a lot of demand on the activity. In fact, we have, uh, it was explained that we, have, we were forced to have, they were forced to have parallel sessions and so on. So uh, let, at the outset, let me begin by congratulating uh, Dr. Bedekar and uh, Dr. Sharma and uh, others who are involved with that. I don't know all the nitty gritties of uh, what went on, but uh, I'm quite impressed. Now, <coughs> uh, on such an, uh, this is uh, kind of an occasion when one would like to sort of take a global view, introspect, and put what we are doing in perspective. So with that in view, I want to say a few uh, words in, the, uh, uh, in this uh, session. Now, uh, I think it's one of the characteristic features of our time, you know, to put it somewhat optimistically, that we are interested in history of science. People usually think of it negatively, that history of science is not being looked at, and uh, history of mathematics is neglected, and so on. But if you look at it more optimistically, this is the first time in a, in a big way that the history of science has been receiving serious attention. We are realizing its importance. If you look at the stages of evolution, even the study of history came, comes, came much later. It was only primarily humans were engaged in science and other activities including arts and so on, but the aspect of what happened in the past, how it was done before, is a curiosity that arrived much later. And even when it did, as you all know, it was sort of focused on the activities of a few, namely the kings and rulers and so on. It started with the ballads of uh, the uh, ancestors of, of the royalty. Gradually, people realized that it was not only the ruling classes that matter, it's, it is the people as a whole. And then, gradually, things came down to looking at how things developed in terms of uh, various activities. Even then, it was not really science, but uh, the development of activity, more of technology. 
gradually, as the intellectual layers developed over this, we came to history of science. People, uh, the, 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 well, the, uh, I, I'm, this may be a somewhat simplistic way of uh, putting it, because in different different cultures there was some uh, aspect of history, etc. But if we look at uh, the pattern as a whole, the, that uh, this has been the uh, way in which things went. And <clears throat> it is, I think, uh, for the first time in the 20th century that uh, great impetus, uh, 19th, 20th, uh, 19th and 20th century, that a great impetus uh, came to history of uh, science and mathematics in particular. Well, science, uh, history of science largely has the history of natural sciences and the history of uh, physical sciences, which is sort of uh, merges with mathematical sciences and mathematics. Much of it uh, uh, until, especially in the Indian context, was more mathematical than experimental uh, uh, aspects. <coughs> uh, <coughs> now, why do we study or learn or care about history? Well, the answer would be something similar to why, why uh, do people go mountaineering? The mountains are there, we feel like climbing them, and we, uh, it's enjoyable, it's, it's, it's nice. And then uh, at the end of it, you do have some experiences some which have uh, bearings on your other uh, uh, aspects of life as well. In a certain sense, it is the same for history. We know that there is, there is history, we know that, uh, well, the world hasn't been the same. It's, it's very crucial that, uh, I mean, that something like on a much broader scale, evolution has happened. Things, uh, humankind has evolved out of a whole series of uh, species and so on. At the development of the humans itself, there have been various phases. <coughs> and then in terms of culture, in terms of uh, how we live today, there have been various things that are of importance that have taken place over centuries or maybe millennia. So depending on how, how we want to, uh, what aspects you are looking at, uh, the time scale can uh, vary. <coughs> now, <coughs> so there, there is history and not only that, there are things, there are sources from which you can study history. I mean, if, if uh, everything were sort of destroyed, then, the, then there, would, there would be no way of recreating except uh, what your parents and grandparents told you. But it turns out that there are means by which one can understand what happened in the past. We can postulate, we can verify, we can produce theories, and then try to understand how things developed, and possibly this will have implications to how we are going to respond to various uh, questions that face us today. That is one of the hopes, but that is not really the aim. The aim is to be enlightened with whatever knowledge we can gather, we can muster. And whatever knowledge we can we, we muster is never, never wasted. Well, this is, uh, is not something that uh, one says out of uh, born and proof or experience, etc. But that is a kind of axiom on which we base ourselves in various aspects of life, that we have certain hopes and they, they seem to be uh, confirmed as we go, go by and by. And uh, the, so it's, it's, uh, and that, that becomes a part of uh, ourselves. So we have uh, these sources, we have uh, means of studying and uh, postulating, etc., etc. Et and then the, uh, there's the, w w once you are going to gather information in this way, there, there, there also needs of, of systematizing that, theorizing, putting, arguing about them, uh, because perspectives of various uh, things can differ. And then uh, one, one would be, uh, the, and out of that, you develop a theory. Now, having uh, said all this, having put optimistically that this is the first time that uh, history of science is getting uh, importance, etc., 
one is apt to notice that it's much less than what uh, the, the, there should be. There's a lot of need for a lot better understanding of history than we have been able to master. Now, this is uh, because of uh, various things. We are obviously, the uh, uh, need for this, as seen by whoever, uh, the purse holders, so to speak, is obviously less than in case of, uh, say, technology or uh, science per se. But nevertheless, it is an important aspect to understand, and uh, uh, it, it needs to uh, be supported. And I, I think more and more uh, societies and governments are getting convinced of this, and we do hope that uh, things can proceed uh, uh, from here. Now, in history, though, as I, as I said at the outset, we base ourselves on, on various sources, these sources often tend, tend to be rather scattered and spotty and uh, not very uh, uh, patterned in the way one, one would have, uh, have them in, uh, in the present day sciences. For instance, to, in studying botany, you, are, you have uh, much possibilities of being much more systematic than you, you can be in uh, history of science or mathematics. The, uh, I mean, it's a, <coughs> I don't know if it can be said to be inevitable in a, in a certain way, but uh, most societies have uh, tended to lose the uh, traces of their history. I mean, they, 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 well, for uh, often for uh, not very reasonable uh, causes, they, uh, like the burning of the libraries for uh, or uh, burning of mo monuments. Sometimes the the weather. Uh, I mean, uh, reasons of uh, an environment, things getting uh, uh, de uh, things decaying because of whatever the material involved is uh, prone to decay and so on. So. So it's, it's a much harder task, therefore. So uh, reconstruct what we are trying to reconstruct in terms, in terms of history. Uh, in a way, this is uh, a problem not necessarily of any particular culture, but of uh, the uh, subject of history of science as, uh, as a whole. I mean, not on. Uh, not only our, the Indian culture, even going, going, from, going from the Babylonians or the Egyptians, we have uh, very little information to, uh, to go by. I mean, it's uh, based on the little, a few so, uh, objects or uh, sources that one can lay hand, uh, hand on. One needs to use, uh, uh, one has to sort of depend on ingenious ways of uh, arguing with that to, to, to think about various possibilities just based on uh, whatever little input you can get and to, to reconstruct the, uh, uh, the past so, for us. Now, uh, in the Indian context, as you know, the, there's been, uh, it's even a lot more uh, difficult. As uh, was mentioned by Dr. Sharma, we have a certain continued tradition of uh, 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 science writing and science composition, uh, which is one way uh, has been helpful in the sense that, that there was a continuity that it's a positive aspect. But on the other hand, uh, many things like the, the, the Nalanda University that one has heard of and uh, many, many things like that are, are, have just got, uh, a thing of the past. We don't really have uh, uh, enough historical material that one can uh, uh, base ourselves on. So they, in, a, in a way, uh, well, the Indian uh, tradition is known for, uh, uh, society, culture is known for the oral tradition. So in, a, in a certain sense, it is sort of, we are forced in a way to depend on what has uh, what has uh, come down to us more at an over, uh, oral level. It's not not entirely, or if, even if not entirely oral, it's a, the, the, the strong oral component has has uh, been a part of uh, in, in, in Indian history. Well, the, for the Vedas, of course, the, it's uh, primarily or entirely oral, but uh, as far as the uh, uh, Siddhanta tradition or other uh, things are concerned, it's partly oral, partly uh, the manuscripts and so on. We, uh, Dr. Sharma uh, recalled some figures about uh, the <coughs> commentaries on Lilavati, etc. I do not know if uh, similar uh, things happened for earlier manuscripts and where they have their, uh, whether they're lost as a result of 
the multiple copies of uh, the Lilawati, etc., which is a possibility. I do not know. I think the historians should explore. Uh, in, in particular, of course, uh, one wonders about uh, Mahavira Acharya's uh, uh, Ganita Sara Sangraha, which uh, uh, which uh, also was one of the popular texts before uh, the uh, uh, Lila, Lilawati of Bhaskara Acharya came into uh, force. So the. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it, it, the historian um, in reconstructing history. There are various uh, problems of this sort which uh, one faces, and then uh, uh, the crucial thing has been uh, is to uh, meet this with. Uh, uh, talking, I mean, see, when when uh, the input is less, then you try to analyze it in more ways and try to uh, get something out of it. Now, some that some uh, something comes out of uh, uh, things that come comes out of that is sort of inbuilt with some uncertainty in a in a certain way. I mean, there, there's uh, uh, there's always a, sc a scope that in your argumentation you are not entirely correct in in some respects, and then there is always need to be to keep revising. Revising, looking, uh, reviewing, and revising when, wherever necessary. Now, uh, in this aspect, there is one danger that uh, particular I find particularly concerned about is see history of science, history of mathematics, at least in our times needs to be viewed as a global heritage. It's not uh, something of a con this country or that country, etc. It's not, the history is not for India. I Indian history is not for Indians. India, the Chinese history is not only for Chinese. It is for everybody. It is a, an international global heritage. And uh, at this point, maybe I, I should make a point here that uh, I'm very glad, especially in this context, that we have uh, people from different continents. On the one hand, we have uh, uh, Kim Plofker here, uh, Clemency Montel from New, uh, Kim Plofker from US, Kim Clemency Montel from uh, New Zealand. Uh, there's uh, I see Dr. Filioza, who is uh, from France, and then we have guests from Japan, Professor Kusuba, and so on. So this is uh, uh, in history of uh, science and mathematics is really an uh, international, global, or uh, or an endeavor of humanity as a whole. But nevertheless. I think in this argumentation, sometimes there is often a, the bias coming from the, uh, say, national origins, the patriotic uh, origins, etc., which I think uh, it's, it's very important to get over this. And uh, <coughs> so when we are trying to uh, ascertain some historical fact, whether about India, whether about China, whether about Egypt, the consideration of the nationality of the worker, the researcher, should not come into play. It should not come into play in the argumentation. It should, it does come into play, and it should come into play in terms of being acquainted with the culture, being uh, the resources of that culture being more readily accessible, both at uh, the physical and the material as well as the intellectual level. I mean, there, is a, there are intellectual resources that one builds up during one's uh, uh, growing up. And they are important. I mean, uh, uh, well, even I, I think even uh, a street child would, know, would recognize some words of Sanskrit in Bombay than, say, in New York. And, uh, so this, this aspect of this intellectual resources that gets built up into you is something important. And it is important that uh, maybe uh, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, if, if you are going to look into study history, you might prefer to do, uh, prefer to concentrate or focus on your own. But I'm glad that uh, this has not been the case. I mean, it's also important to have cross-cultural understanding and uh, that build that into the study of history of science. So uh, the argumentation, when we construct, reconstruct history, the aim should not be 
to try and make a point about this country or that country. Priorities are important. Priorities are certainly important, and the clarity on priorities is indeed important because that it's a, it's a part of the theory. It's a part of how things are built one after another, uh, one o uh, over another. But that does not mean that you should be less interested with if somehow the prior, your priorities associated with your uh, tradition or your culture seem to go down. And uh, that somehow seems to happen. And uh, I, I think uh, many uh, writers in this tend to uh, emphasize priorities associated with the, their own culture, etc., which I, uh, I, I think needs to be avoided. I don't, I don't want to go more into uh, any denigration of that, because I, in, in a sense, I realize that it's, uh, it's a part of uh, one's growing up and perhaps is uh, not entirely avoidable. But I think uh, one needs to keep a perspective that science is everybody's science. It's the moment you think of think of it as something private as something of your own uh, of your country of your uh, state of uh, associated only with your language uh, i think that's no more science it is uh, something of uh, 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 of a prim uh, more primitive nature today the world ha has uh, come together unified and uh, of course uh, I sh maybe one should also bring here the perspective that to some extent, or the, to perhaps to quite an extent, I mean the extent can be debatable. The in India, the uh, feature of trying to emphasize Indian uh, achievements, or I would even say trying to exaggerate the Indian uh, achievements, is partly the re, uh, result of uh, the colonial rule. So there was a certain period when the Indian achievements were underrated. They didn't get their due. And uh, this has been well documented now. I don't think there is any uh, issue about that. And as a response to that, I think there is a certain nationalistic tendency to counter that. I think, but uh, the, that time is really past. <coughs> and uh, we should be conscious that at this time, that attitude is of no no merit. We need to get over, we need to think of, well, we'll still have to have our passports and visas and everything, but as intellectuals, we need to think of ourselves as global citizens. An intellectual belongs to the whole world and not to any country. He belongs to the country only to the extent of being able to interact better with the people closer to him. Anyway, so uh, I think uh, I, I'll sort of wind up uh, that aspect with uh, this, uh, uh, with these few uh, comments. Uh, I want to recall a few things about uh, the uh, development of study of history of science in uh, India, particularly on this occasion. Uh, all of you, of course, would be familiar with uh, uh, the standard texts like. Uh, Datta and Singh, the history of Hindu mathematics, books, two-volume two book of Datta and Singh. Uh, I hope uh, the younger generation is also aware of the book of uh, Saraswati Amma, very, uh, 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 <coughs> very well-written book on geometry in uh, ancient India. Uh, there's also the book of uh, Srinivasa Yangar and various others. And, uh, well, in a sense, I think the, uh, the there's uh, I, I would say there's some discontinuity, and uh, people tended to use these old books until the book of uh, Kim Plofker came. I think uh, it's, it's a very wonderful contribution that she has made to the uh, study of uh, mathematics in, <coughs> in ancient India. And uh, those of you who, are, who have uh, not acquainted yourself or not uh, looked at it, of course. I won't say read, it's work. reading from cover to cover is, uh, would be a project on its own. But certainly, if one should acquaint uh, oneself with that and see, uh, be familiar with uh, what she has to say. Uh, she has also another other uh, more extensive articles. So anyway, I will not talk more about that. But this book, certainly, I think uh, people should <coughs> uh, read. Uh, 
Now, at the level of organizing uh, the community of history of science, I think uh, one of the main uh, things that I should I would mention is the Indian Society for, of, uh, for History of Mathematics, of which uh, I currently happen to be the president. The society was started in, uh, in 1978 by Professor Yuan Singh. And uh, well, it uh, has continued, act act uh, <coughs> continued actively. And the bulletin, Ganita Bharati, that was mentioned, was uh, started just at, uh, at that time. And uh, Professor R.C. Gupta, I don't know how many of you have heard the name, Professor R.C. Gupta, one of the very eminent contributors in uh, history of mathematics from India. He, he edited the bulletin for the, uh, 25 years, so I think until uh, 2005. To, uh, <coughs> he was the editor. And uh, the when I had the occasion of looking at the old issues, etc., I'm quite impressed that the uh, the uh, in, in the overall context of neglect of the subject in the in the country, it was quite remarkable for uh, for him to have uh, uh, <coughs> run the bulletin for such a long time. Uh, after tw 2005, there was Professor Yadav edited that for three years, and after that, uh, I have been in charge. And try I'm trying to bring it to the old uh, glory, if I uh, if I somehow can. And uh, I seek, in fact, I take this uh, opportunity to seek the support of uh, the gathering to to uh, strengthen the bulletin, both in terms of uh, reading it and contributing to the uh, to the bulletin. <coughs> Again, uh, going back to my earlier point, Ganita Bharati is, is, is focus is on Indian mathematics, but it is for everybody. So uh, it's, it is a means of interacting with the world, or the, in the, interacting with the international community of, of, in history of mathematics. And we need to put, put in our share and also at the same time imbibe whatever the, is available uh, from uh, <coughs> Uh, around the the world, so <coughs> the uh, and I do hope with the support, with the help of all of you, the uh, Ganit Varthi will become a vehicle of uh, of uh, putting uh, crystallizing our ideas of uh, of on history of uh, mathematics, focusing on India, but also uh, on the uh, on the internet and from other cultures. And, and uh, as a means of in interacting with the community around, uh, around as I said. <coughs> uh, well, at, uh, um, among the persons, this is this is at the organizational level, and uh, apart from uh, the uh, in, Indian Society for History, of, in, Indian, so apart from the bulletin, first of all, I mean the Indian Society for History of Mathematics has uh, annual conferences and meetings and so on, and sometimes additional workshops. So on this occasion of uh, the 900th anniversary, which is also celebrated, uh, being celebrated here. The, uh, we have an international conference at uh, Pune in uh, November. And uh, <coughs> I suppose many of you may be uh, aware of that. But just in case those who do not, uh, please do uh, go to our website. And uh, you can get more information about uh, the, the conference. There's going to be a, uh, there also there's going to be a symposium on uh, Paskara. Uh, some of the people are common, but uh, there'll, be, there'll be others. I think it is those, in all these things, things, there's also the issue of uh, uh, the specific time that is convenient to uh, specific experts, etc. Maybe, I do not know some of the people who, uh, are, uh, who could not come here. I don't know what, uh, who they are. So, but maybe they, they will be available there. So uh, now, uh, so these are some of these activities at a, at a certain nebulous level, right? I mean, this is in a certain sense. I, I like to draw a parallel between uh, what happened in mainstream mathematics and uh, with regard to history of science. Uh, in mainstream mathematics, there were. Uh, 
see uh, the Indian Math uh, so Mathematical Society, which is uh, the earliest mathematical society to come up uh, uh, come in India. This was in uh, it was established in 1907, and uh, the the. <coughs> Similar activities like the producing the journal, holding conferences, etc., and that elevated. So it said one sees a certain correlation of uh, the activities at the society level and the uh, research uh, development at various uh, institutions, universities, and so on. Uh, for those of you who may be interested, I mentioned that I, there is a there, there is an art, detailed article which I have, uh, which is accessible online. Uh, if you go to something called Hyderabad Intelligence Sir, then you can find uh, the article. I will not say uh, more about uh, that aspect here. But the parallel I just wanted to drop on is uh, that on the one hand, there is a need for this uh, scattered or nebulous activity on the uh, like societies and meetings and uh, so on. On the other hand, it is also need needed to have a more structured part of uh, structured development in the study of history of mathematics. Now, uh, and for that, you also need the infrastructure of uh, like textbooks, say uh, expository kind of material, etc. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there has not been enough of it. I did already mention some books. But uh, for instance, uh, so, so as of now, as you would know, there are not uh, many uh, structured programs. Uh, Ram Subramanian is here. He has one uh, going on, but uh, which, except for these exceptions of this kind uh, at a few places, I am not even sure with how well they are going on, where, where they exist. Uh, I am, of course, sure of uh, Dr. Ram Subramanian's uh, activities here, but uh, there is a need for uh, programs for in uh, history of mathematics, universities taking up uh, such programs. The, uh, the number of theses uh, in history of math uh, mathematics, I don't know, is very meager. Would you say but it's less than 15 a year? Or it's uh, I think it's it's very minuscule, and uh, even some of them I do not I, I do not know uh, if one really wants to depend uh, call for quality uh, the numbers might even even go down I think uh, <coughs> uh, so there needs to be uh, there needs to uh, the need, uh, stronger more activity in this and strengthening of uh, this activity now. The, uh, of course, people, uh, the, the, when they have, I have often seen this emphasized that universities should start courses and uh, etc. But there's also simultaneously, I think, uh, the, the, uh, at the moment, there's also a need for clarity on what the syllabus should be. I think people have their own ideas, but I don't think they, they are very they, uh, coherently uh, organizable at this point. I think for that purpose, I think in that respect, uh, it's very important that we should have more books which are in the nature of textbooks which uh, uh, need to come up. And uh, I, I do not know if anybody who, who, who uh, would take up the challenge, but uh, this is something of a need which uh, uh, that strongly felt. And so after you have this material, it will be much easier to uh, persuade agencies like the UGC and so on to have uh, to have uh, more institutions take up uh, these kind of programs. So in a way, it's important that we don't put card, the card before the horse. So there it, it needs to be more discussion, more concrete material that one can, uh, from which one can have a, a lay ready access to the uh, newcomer, interested persons, to the, to in a more dependable way. I mean, it's not uh, more authentic material. I mean, the, 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 uh, authenticity, I, I, I won't say it. I mean, I, uh, it, it's, it's not, not going to be for me to certify what is authentic and, or what is not authentic. But there has to be a collective sense of uh, uniform understanding. Um, so, so, well, there are, there are always going to be things on which uh, the his, historians, uh, workers in histo uh, history are not going to agree with each other. But there needs to be a body that is agreed systematically, uh, which can become a part of the collective uh, narrative. 
and that is what can pass on can be passed on as uh, course material otherwise it's simply going to be uh, uh, kind of uh, i don't uh, perpetuating the the prejudices that lo that prevail locally that is not uh, that, that is not a very desirable thing to though to though, though, though uh, it might have some positive contribution. It needs to be avoided, and we need to have a collective picture of uh, what we would like to, uh, uh, what our collective understanding is of uh, uh, history, not only of India, uh, of, of the world. And, I mean, I think of the Western uh, <coughs> mathematics. There is uh, enough material which uh, one can use. It's not quite in the form of a textbook that can be used here, but uh, so it can be uh, the part of that could also be absorbed. The, we need to, uh, <coughs> on uh, contributions of other older cultures like Chinese and uh, Egyptians, we have in fact a lot more to do. I mean, we need to get even a, uh, a lot more understanding of uh, <coughs> Uh, their history and incorporate it as a uh, as uh, part of our collective understanding of how uh, we as human beings uh, developed in terms of the uh, history of our own subject. Uh, <coughs> now, as a in the concluding part, I just want to mention something about uh, say at the international level. There, there are also efforts to promote history of mathematics. The uh, uh, something called the International Commission for History of uh, Mathematics. Uh, actually, when I mentioned uh, Professor Asi Gupta, I should have mentioned that uh, he uh, is uh, an awardee. He was awarded the Kenneth O. May uh, Prize. Uh, which is a very prestigious award in, for his contributions in history, which is a prestigious award. I think uh, Kim Plofkar was uh, the one who handed it over to him at the Hyderabad Inter International Conference. <laughs> the International Commission for uh, uh, History of Mathematics has been endeavoring to uh, promote the subject in uh, uh, various ways. And again, uh, Kim Plofkar is one of, uh, member of that. Uh, and uh, I have been nominated for the next four years, and I will have a role to play. Maybe I'll uh, get tips from you to <laughs> about uh, the activities there. <coughs> uh, so my, I, I must say, though I, I was aware of its existence, and I have been involved with history of mathematics, should have known more about it. and. Uh, when uh, I got this nomination, I went to their site and tried to find out a few things. And I've, so I, they have a, you may not believe, they have a directory of people interested, in, involved with the uh, history of mathematics. So I went to the India section, and I, I must say, I can't recall any of your names. I think they had the, uh, they, I mean, of course, not the foreigners are not involved here. So uh, the, the directory has just uh, hardly any names uh, from India. And those names which are there, I could hardly recognize. So I, I th there, there is, uh, I just want to uh, mention to you that there is such an endeavor. And uh, it would be important. So of course, this directory, I mean, they, they surely don't have means of getting the information from all over. Well, people need to volunteer and enter their names uh, and uh, so that they're in touch with uh, the international com uh, community as a part and uh, sort of in can involve in what the International Commission for History of Mathematics uh, can do. So I would encourage you to go to the site of the uh, Indian Commission for History of Mathematics and uh, uh, yeah, I suppose there is a, there, there is a, uh, they have certain procedure for uh, enrolling as uh, into uh, putting your name into the directory, and uh, you should take the, those of you who are are part of the history community certainly should uh, uh, enroll yourself. So uh, I think I have uh, pretty much covered what I would have uh, like to say. I, I must mention in conclusion that uh, when I was invited to make this uh, give this. Keynote address was the term that was used here. It was mentioned as inaugural address. So I was not quite clear what I am, uh, the, what the role of uh, this talk is going to be. But I hope I have uh, been 
able to convey something on this occasion. And uh, I conclude this by with uh, thanks to all of you for your patience. Thank you.